Good evening and welcome and good to have you back again as part of our internet family. For those who've joined us but not logged in, you may be wondering who this strange man is wearing a fancy dress number. My name is Brother Sean and I'm the founder of the Teo community of Interfaith Franciscans, a group of ordinary men and women who live a very simple life following in the footsteps of Francis and Claire of Assisi. This evening, <clears throat> I would like us to light a candle for peace and offer this candle especially for the intentions of Brother James, who will be shortly making a trip to Syria for peace. So let us just close our eyes and just reflect on where we are and just commit whatever may be troubling us. We may be concerned about someone we love or it may be that we're concerned about the way the world is going at the moment. We'll just bring these thoughts, reflections, <clears throat> these requests to the light and let the light of the divine encompass you now. Amen. It is so good to be back with you again and I notice Sister Sue has logged in and our dear Margaret and Victor from Lincoln and that is a joy. It's a joy for my heart. And speaking of joy, I would like to begin by playing a favourite a favourite of mine, but also I think a favourite of Sister Sue. So just sit back and relax. <laughs> Sight. Lost on a stardust trail On a mystical night <coughs> Wash of a million ways Calling to me Deep in my soul I can hear The sound of the old Far from the noise of man, free from its all, we took our dreams and ran. We were scattered like gold, softer than silken feet through a night like a prayer taking our hearts to meet the sound of the ocean golden moon silent friend right along just like me he can see the beauty in your song Strung like a million pairs Stars in the sky Bends as the seabirds call Their lonely lullaby Heaven is there to touch your heart is clean I've come to love so much The sound of the ocean
Sometimes the soul can be what the mind cannot see. Hell, what is there to touch if your heart is clear? I come to love so much the sound of the ocean. This sound of the ocean. Each time I play that, I always get goosebumps. Not many records today do that, but this particular artist really does resonate with my heart. So anyway, <clears throat> enough about daydreaming. This evening I want to show a video of mine that I recorded, oh, it could have been three to four years ago, and it's about a sharing from my heart of the little way, the life that we lead, the life that we live. It's not dogmatic, it's not over the top, it's a life of simplicity, rooted very much in the teachings of Francis, but underpinned by another amazing Catholic saint called the Little Flower or Teresa of Lisieux, because a lot of her teachings resonate with Francis and Claire. And Teresa, as you know, she died at a very early age. I think it was 24 um, of tuberculosis. And she lived a very simple life as an enclosed Carmelite nun in Lisieux in France with our four other sisters. So let us now just spend a moment just to be still, just to be still in the presence of love. We live in a world today where people say, oh, I love you. But a lot of the love that they're loving and sharing isn't the love that is a selfless, reverent, respectful love. Often it is a controlling love, an abusive love, or it has a secret hidden agenda. The love that God shares with you and me is a selfless love. The divine doesn't love you or me any more or less, but loves us equally be we a hell raiser, a drug baron, someone like Hitler or Stalin. God loves each of their children with the same love as you and I, or even the nuns and the monks and the great men and women who made it to the altar of sainthood in the Catholic Church. As for me, I don't profess to be any of those things except myself and just try and live a good life, an uncomplicated life, and try and manage the process of growing older with um, some common sense. But the journey has many blessings and it has many tests. But the greatest test in my journey is me. I always seem to put the odd obstacle in my way. I guess sometimes I go back into my head when really I should stay in my heart. But I want to read to you, if I may, a reading, a reflection for today, <clears throat> for the 13th of January. And it's about Christ's baptism and mine. Jesus also had been baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. There is a difference between Christ's baptism and mine. Through his baptism, Jesus Christ, God's beloved son, was identified and introduced to his human and divine ministry among us sinful beings. My baptism made me God's child. God's baptism made you 
God's child, reclaimed me from sin's bondage and restored all of us to God's eternal kingdom. My baptism in some respects was also similar to that of Christ. It was that event in which I was commissioned like you and empowered to be God's servant. I was made to be God's child at baptism and the Holy Spirit entered our lives at our baptism. As God's work in and through Christ began with his baptism, so my baptism like yours unites me with the saving presence of Christ and initiates the work of God and Christ in and through me as well as through you. At the baptism of Christ, excuse me, it identifies him as the servant and as a part of the servant people that had been prophesied and promised to us in the ancient scriptures. So my baptism with yours makes us a part of that servant people. The baptism of Christ ultimately led to the cross and the resurrection. My baptism makes the death and resurrection of Christ applicable to my life. It also sets my feet upon a narrow path that leads through struggle and conflict. And that promise, a cross for me to carry on behalf of others. It is a life of joy. And yes, it is a life of peace in the midst of sorrows and all our strivings. It is a life that I must often proclaim and reclaim and return to when the siren voices of the world tempt me as they do to go astray each day. Nuns and monks, pastors and imams, rabbis and holy men and women are not immune from the tests of each day struggles. In fact, I think we're put under the spotlight a lot more because we know what we want. We want to be in service to a loving God. We want to embrace the marginalized, the downtrodden, the burnt out schizophrenics in society where many just walk past and ignore. For those who've lost their voice, for those who are crying in the wilderness, for love, for understanding, for tolerance and for acceptance. The momentous event of my baptism was the most important event of my life. I don't remember it. I was baptized in Glasgow when I was two weeks old, I believe, according to my mom and I was given the name Sean Mary. Sean, my Christian name, but Mary in, in Catholic culture in Glasgow in Scotland, if you were born to Catholic parents and you were the firstborn son as I was, you were dedicated to Mary, the mother of God. So all firstborn sons born in Scotland as Catholics or baptized as Catholics were automatically given the name Mary after their Christian name. Interesting, isn't it? So my name is Sean Mary, James, and then Jude was my confirmation name. All very Catholic. It says here, I am grateful for my baptism, dear Lord, even though I could not comprehend its true value or understand its implications at that time. Now that I realize its meaning for my life, I rejoice and seek always by your enabling grace and help to joyfully fulfill its demands upon my life each and every waking moment 
Amen. I hope you enjoyed those words. I hope they spoke to your heart. And for now, I want to play something else. We usually play it in the morning for our morning prayer. And I'd like to offer this for our dear sister Margaret. Her husband Victor has just left us a message to say that Margaret is rather unwell. So let us just be still and just send love, light and blessing to Margaret. And I'm just being guided now, which of these songs could I play for Margaret? So let us just go with our heart. Fill my house unto the fullest. A catchy tune. So get well, dear Margaret, and hurry home. Pray that that will help our dear sister Margaret make a good recovery. But I thank Victor for sharing about Margaret with us. And maybe that's what I should do now, is to not go ahead and do what I had planned to do, to read something for you, but to just be still and invite you to join us in the stillness and send love, light and blessing to Margaret, to Victor who's caring for her, and to all those who are struggling at this hour, who may be unwell, who may be alone and have no one to care for them. So let us just do a short meditation, short and sweet, and let us bring in the Cosmic Christ, the Cosmic Christ, the physician of our soul, I invite you to be still, whether you're lying down, sitting down, or standing up. I invite you to ground yourself, to feel the love of Mother Earth below your feet. And as you breathe in, breathe in the love of the universe. 
letting your out breath release any weariness, tiredness, unwellness, maybe anxiety, maybe stress. Just release it in your out breath to Father Mother God and relax now. And I want you to visualize that you're here with me in our monastery garden. It's not a huge garden, but it is a sacred garden and it welcomes everybody. You don't have to be a monk or a nun or a member of our community. You don't even have to be a believer. Come. So many com comment on the blank CDs hanging from the cherry tree with their peace prayers so that when the rays of brother sun and sister moon hit them the gentle breeze blows the prayer of Francis for global peace to the world so come in find a seat either under the trees or by the water features and sit and relax. And in doing so, be aware that you're not alone here, that the Christ is here. And as you sit looking down the garden towards the main entrance of the house, you see a mist a lovely clear mist coming from the front door down the pathway to you. And that gentle mist envelops you and you're cocooned in warmth, love, even joy. And with every breath you breathe in, you are breathing in the love of the Christ for you. And you sense like two paddles of heat, one on your chest and the other at the nape of your neck, coming to you from this gentle cloud of mist. And the heat is from the hands of Jesus. And he invites you to listen, for he has something to share with you. And he wants you to hear it and reflect upon it. Try to view each day as an adventure, carefully planned out by your guide. Instead of staring into the day that is ahead of you, attempting to program it according to your will, be attentive to me and to all that I have prepared for you. Thank me for this day of life, recognizing that it is a precious gift. It's an unrepeatable gift. Trust that I am with you each and every waking moment, whether you sense my presence or not. A thankful, trusting attitude helps you to see events in your life from my perspective. A life lived close to me will never be dull or predictable. Expect each new day to be full of surprises, joys and blessings. Resist your tendency to search for the easiest route through the day. Be willing to follow wherever I lead. No matter how steep or treacherous the path before you, the safest place 
is to be by my side. Thank you, Lord, for those words for each one of us, for they were divinely guided in the knowledge that we know that one of our internet family has been struggling and has been unwell. And I pray those words will mean something. Be still. Be still in the presence of love. Never be afraid of that love. And to know that you are in love and that you are loved by a selfless God must mean something to you. Just open your heart and allow the light of that love reawaken your heart to the I am presence of all that is. We take a deep breath and we breathe in that healing touch of Christ. And in our out breath, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for touching me despite my many failings, despite the times when I've walked away, the times when I knew better than you but I thank you for always bringing me back to my heart. And though I may not always appreciate the stern discipline, in the end I am thankful. For our need of you is greater than maybe yours of us. But you are a God of love. And I can testify to that from my own life's journey on how you helped me, empowered me, the senior nurse in palliative care, who through a prescribed antidepressant lost everything. Where I became so severely mentally ill and incarcerated for six months through my disinhibited behavior. I thank you how you use nature to convey to me that you loved me in the shape of a little red robin who has walked with me every day. I see her every day, even now, 19 years on. And I thank you that my breakdown was your breakthrough to me to lead me back to my heart. I thank you, Lord, for you never abandon your children. Sadly, it is we who abandon you. So we thank you for taking care of dear Margaret and dear Sister Sue and all who've logged, who've not logged in but who are here with us. Thank you. In the words of the great Francis, may God reward you with that inner peace and joy of being of service. It is not a burden. It is not a guilt trip. It is a reawakening of who we are as a child of God. And now I would like to cue the video celebrating the little way. I hope you enjoy it because it is our little way of life. Look forward to your company tomorrow evening after Sister Elizabeth, who's talking about Francis of Assisi. And she talks to us live from Philadelphia in America.